The big question is, how do we do one of these surveys? The first thing to do is to get prepared. So first of all, we need to choose a square. Yeah, that's right. So you need to make sure that it's safe and that you're comfortable to get there and um, that the landowner is happy yes. if it's a privately owned place, if they're happy for you to yeah. go there. And book it. On naturetrackers.com.au. We want surveys everywhere, but not just in the bush. You can do your survey here. Or here. It's really important before you go out to really know what you're looking for. And really the important thing is wedge-tailed eagle. Make sure you can identify if it is a wedge-tailed eagle and then all the other stuff's a bonus for it. You've booked your square, you know where you're going and you can identify a wedge-tailed eagle. Yay! Next step is what do you bring with you? And we've got some ideas that we're going to show you now. Eyes. So, first of all. And binoculars if you can. So you can see the birds from a distance and identify them. And you want to record what you've seen. That's really important. So you can go old school and you can take a clipboard and or the smartphone app you can also download to record what you see. And it's really helpful if you can get a photo. I've got a lovely camera here, but any sort of camera, if you photograph what you've seen, that's brilliant. And the digital camera means the photos can be emailed around experts and we can soon sort out what it probably is, or maybe um, we can decide what it isn't and sort out the, the record. Um, blaze away, I suggest. It's not film, it doesn't cost that much. And, and a compass would be great because we asked some questions about the direction you mm -hmm. saw the bird. We want a map so nice. that you don't get lost. And what are all the things that we need so that just people stay survive? Alive. Yeah, you've got to stay alive <laughs> Water, when you're doing this. sun cream, food. Food, a lovely picnic so you have a really good day. Oh, we forgot about an ID book, just to remind yourself. And oh, maybe yes. some other books and uh, things as well, so you can just enjoy spotting all sorts of birds and other animals while you're out. Mm. So one last thing to think about before you go out is where you're going to do your surveys. We'll get the best information if you can do six 10-minute surveys from different parts of your square. And we'd like you to choose those places, places you can get to safely, and that give you the maximum chance if there's an eagle in that square, you've got the best chance possible of picking it up. So that could be uh, along a forest edge, that could be in a nice big open field where you've got a really big view. There's a bunch of different places I expect around the square that you could pick, so have a good look at the map. So you've got to your survey spot and reached the place where you want to look for the eagles. What do we do now, Claire? Well, we'd like the surveys to start either on the hour or on the half hour, so like nine or 10 o'clock or half past 10, mm -hmm. half past 11. Uh, so maybe at five, two or 25 past, that's the time when you're gonna start to get ready. Yeah, so you wanna do things like, you can record things already on your survey sheet, like the weather, which way's north. It's really helpful to have an alarm to tell you to start, so you don't have to keep looking at your watch, mm. oh, an, an alarm, alarm 10 minutes stop. later to tell you to stop. So the alarm goes off, and you start doing your 10 minute survey. This is it. So you're looking around, you're trying to try as hard as you can to see a wedge-tailed eagle. Doesn't matter if you don't, but try your hardest to see one. And it could be a tiny little dot in the sky, or it could be in the trees, which can be really hard to see. And of course, you're looking for other raptors as well, and yeah. cockatoos and corellas. So it takes a long time to really scan the whole sky. An important thing to remember is to actually look with your eyes and you use the binoculars to check what it is. When I do these sorts of surveys, a point survey, these are called, I do a slow scan and it might take me a minute to look around, have a really good look, then you can check things with binoculars. Um, and that first really good look is where you'll see most of the things you're going to see. Um, a bird might come into vision, but keep looking the whole time. And that the beauty of having several people is one person can scan, the other person write. Oh, Claire, I think I've seen something. Oh, cool. What have you seen? Well, it looked like a big bird of prey, so maybe an eagle. OK, so was it an eagle? Should we write down that? Or? I think we can't say it's definitely an eagle, so okay, we can put so it as a large bird of prey. Large bird of prey, fine. And what, um, oh, where's my compass? What compass direction was that? I think that's about southeast, isn't it? OK, yeah, you're right, yeah. And roughly what distance? I would have guessed at about 200 metres, but that's always a bit difficult. OK, fantastic. And I would have liked to get a photo, but that was pretty quick, yeah, wasn't it? It was yeah. hard to see it well. So if you're out doing the survey and you've seen a bird, you might like to record it first off on your data sheet. Or if you're pretty smart with the app and you've practised it beforehand, you might be able to enter it directly onto the app. 
but definitely if you want to record your location accurately, the best thing is to do that through the app, or otherwise you're gonna need GPS and you're gonna to have to copy the location down onto your data sheet. Oh, that's the alarm to end our 10 minutes. Okay, so we stop looking, we can gather our things together, and then we repeat this six times in our square. So if you're doing your data entry on the app, then there's a big pointy up arrow that we want you to press at the end of the day to make sure it all uploads and, and we get it and we can analyze it. Uh, if you've entered it on the data sheet, uh, you can scan that and email it to us or you can type it in on the web. So let's just pretend we finished a survey. Well done. Thank you. But sadly, I didn't see anything. Do I still send that data through? Yes. yes! <laughs> it's not a failure. We it's need still all important. the survey results, all of them, whatever you saw, even if you saw nothing, it's all really useful stuff. We know that not everyone will be able to do a survey. But you can still get out there and learn a lot about birds. You can get out with your family and pick a square and still go out there and do one. And that's going to be absolutely fantastic practice for next year's survey. Maybe you can get your eye and get really good at it and do a fantastic survey.